Hi, my name is Barb Binder with Rocky Mountain Training. I've been an Adobe Certified Instructor on FrameMaker since 1997 and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about workspaces. Workspaces arrived in FrameMaker in version 9, so they're part of versions 9, 10, and 11. And a workspace is made up of three components. The first one is a display of 0, 1, or more toolbars that will appear across the top of your screen. Uh, a workspace can also show pods, which will appear towards the bottom of your screen. And they'll include panels, which appear on the far right side of your screen. You can see which workspace is in use by going to the workspace list on the top right and clicking to pull down the list. And Adobe FrameMaker 11 comes with five default workspaces. Each one is meant for a different workflow. The first workflow is called authoring and as I click on authoring you're going to see a few changes on my screen. The toolbar is exactly the same. There's no pods down at the bottom and there are different panels on the right hand side. And the idea behind the authoring workspace is this is what Adobe thinks you need if you're writing documentation in FrameMaker. These are the tools you need to get that job done. The second default workspace is called blank. And this looks more like FrameMaker did in the earlier versions before workspaces were introduced at, at version 9. It's a very blank screen, no toolbars, no uh, pods, no panels. And this is a good one if you want to show somebody what you're working on, but you're afraid they're going to be distracted by all of the activity that happens on the screen. The third workspace is a design workspace and this is one Adobe thinks you could use if you're designing new documentation within FrameMaker. You have one toolbar at the top, two pods at the bottom, there's one called conditional text and one called variables and I can switch between them by clicking on one name or the other and there are some panels on the right hand side for example paragraph designer, character designer, table designer. The fourth workspace is Manage Graphics. It's going to look very different than the other workspaces have so far. Additional toolbars appear at the top. There's a Graphics toolbar on the left-hand side. There's a different pod. This one's called Hotspots. And then different panels on the right. And the idea here is if you're doing a graphic intensive document, you have all the tools you need to be able to get those graphics to look the way you want them to look. The final workspace is called the Review Workspace and you might use this one if you have finished laying out your documentation and you're simply reviewing it. The only thing that shows up is the Track Changes toolbar at the very top. So you can be going through and accepting and rejecting changes, much like you might do in Microsoft Word. Now these workspaces are great and one of these might work well for you, but my idea here is that Adobe doesn't know exactly what I do and so none of these workspaces are tailored for my specific workflow. I tend to work with the design workflow as a starting point and then I customize it to make it exactly what I need for a given job. Now I'm not a big fan of toolbars. I tend not to use them very often. So I'm satisfied with the one toolbar at the top. But if you're looking for additional toolbars, they are all available in the view menu under toolbars. And you can show as many of these as you like. You could even show all of them if you want to. I'm going to leave the toolbars the way they are. I like the two pods that are here. Conditional text and variables are pods that I use, but not all the time. And they're taking up a great deal of my screen real estate. If I double click on a tab, for example the tab that says variables, I can collapse the pods down to the bottom of my screen and get that space back. Now if I decide I want to work on variables, one click will open the pod and again two clicks will collapse it down. That works for me. On the far right side of my screen I have my panels. I've got a good start on the panels that I use regularly, but these aren't all of them. Um, and they're taking up a lot of space. So if you look at the top right of the panel group, you'll see that there are two black arrows. Clicking once on the black arrows will collapse the panels to the right side of the screen. Clicking them again will expand them. When you collapse them, you gain more screen space but you don't lose any functionality. If you want to work with the Paragraph Designer, you can click once to open it, click it again to close it. That works for any of the panels. Now the designers are great. These two uh, panels work with the two pods that are currently open, 
but I always want to have my catalogs available. So I'm going to go add the catalogs now to this workspace. I'll begin by going to the Format menu Character Catalog, onto Format menu Paragraph Catalog. Then I'm going to take a quick stop in the Graphics menu and ask for the Object Style Catalog. Object styles are a new feature in FrameMaker 11 and definitely worth exploring. And then finally I'm going to go and ask for my Table Catalog. The catalogs appear at the bottom of my panel group. I can click to close the one that's open and I can just press and drag to reorder them. I prefer to have my paragraph catalog at the top, then my character catalog, then my table catalog, and then my object catalog. If this is the workspace I'm looking for and I like the way it looks now, the next step is to actually save it as my own custom workspace. Back in the workspace list, I'm going to choose Save Workspace, and I'm going to call this workspace Learning FrameMaker, and then I'll pick OK. FrameMaker has memorized the position of the toolbar spots and panels and saved that as my custom workspace called Learning FrameMaker. If I decide I want to work with one of the default workspaces, I can always go back, for example, to Design, which is what I used to start my Learning FrameMaker workspace. That's the way it looked initially. But I also have the ability to go back to Learning FrameMaker at any time and go to my custom workspace. I use different workspaces for different jobs that I work on when I'm doing freelance work. Certain jobs require certain tools to be available. I set my workspaces up with names that describe the jobs I'm working on and I can very quickly get to my workspaces as soon as I'm ready to use them. There are three distinct benefits to incorporating workspaces into your work workflow. Number one, you can arrange your workspaces to only display the tools that you need. Uh, if you're not going to use a toolbar or a pod or a panel, get them off your screen and don't even have to look at them anymore. They'll just be out of sight. If you need them, you can always go back and open them up again. Um, number two, You'll know exactly where everything is if you use a workspace consistently. For example, I always keep my paragraph designer as the first panel in my panel group. If I'm working on my document page and I th I'm thinking in my mind, I'm going to go to the paragraph designer. My mouse starts sliding right up to the top of the panel group before I even get a chance to look over there because I know that's where it's going to be. And then, as a final thought, when I'm teaching FrameMaker to my students, I'll often undock a panel so that they can focus on it. So if I'm talking about the Paragraph Designer, I might undock the Paragraph Designer and then close the other ones so that they can focus on what the Paragraph Designer is going to do for them. In addition, maybe I want to compare that to the Paragraph Catalog. So I've got the Paragraph Catalog undocked and then open. And then when I'm finished, I want to clean up my workspace and get everything back the way it was. It's like clicking that easy button in the Staples commercials. People press that button and magic things happen. Paper gets ordered. Offices get all cleaned up. All I have to do is come back here and reset my workspace at any point, And everything is going to go back to the way it was when I created it and saved it. That's also a technique I use with my students. If they see me undock a panel, sometimes they'll go ahead and undock the panel as well. Only they think that when they're done with it, they can just close it, not realizing that closing it is different, different from redocking it. Ten minutes later, they might say, hey, Barb, where's my paragraph designer? And a very quick answer is, just go reset your workspace. Whenever you reset your workspace, everything goes back to the place you put it when you saved it. Spend some time looking at your workspaces, figure out what you want and what you don't want, set up the workspace exactly as you like it, save it. It's definitely going to be a time saver for you as you move on into more advanced features in FrameMaker.